few days ago I ordered something for my microscope and uh, today uh, it, ad it arrived and I want to open it now with you uh, together and uh, let's have a look what's in it. Okay, uh, so let's get started. Um, wonder if we have to open it. I don't know. Let's cut it open like this. And there is a box in here. I bought it second hand. Okay, there's nothing else in here. It's a little bit like Christmas. The excitement is high. I know what's in it because of, how, of course, I ordered it. But still, I hope uh, that it's uh, functional. Uh huh. A lot of bubble wrap. Of course, it was sent all across, uh, all all around uh, half of the globe. So you better wrap it properly. How do I do this? It's getting smaller and smaller. And oh, yet another layer. Maybe you're already guessing what it is. This the size is like the size of an objective, a microscope objective. And that's of course it. I ordered a microscope objective, uh, one that uh, one of the same series that I already have. And oh yeah. And now let's let's go for it. Let's go for it. Here it is. Here it is. I present an Olympus A60 X achromatic objective, dry objective, and uh, that is uh, the last one that I needed. And now my microscope uh, has uh, all Olympus objectives, all the way from 4x to 60x. And uh, yeah, I hope that it works fine. Um, it is used, the microscope objective. Uh, um, I'll test it. I mean, the company told me that it works fine. Okay, so let's have a let's have a look. I'll now install it. Um, I ha do have another 60x objective already installed, but it's not of the same series, and therefore this uh, objective is not par focal. So this means I have to always change, uh, uh, always have to refocus, and that is not very convenient. But with this objective, it should be uh, par focal, and uh, then um, I it's going to be much more convenient and easier uh, to do microscopy work. So, but uh, let's uh, exchange it and let's have a close look. The objective uh, does have uh, a damage here in front. I knew about that. I was informed about that. But uh, the lens itself uh, seems to be intact. Now, I have no idea what in the world uh, they did with this lens. Um, but uh, I checked uh, from the other side and by looking through it, I actually did see that uh, the lens was all clear and uh, there were no problems. So um, I am somewhat uh, confident uh, that uh, it's going to work fine. Um, it, the lens apparently also was tested and it was reassured to me that it actually does work fine. But really, I have no idea who in, what in the world happened here, okay? Yeah, but uh, again, it's not the optics, it's, uh, it's not the optical impression of the lens on the outside that's important, it's the optical quality uh, and the image quality that it delivers. Uh, and I'm quite happy that I have this right now. The spring loading also works fine. So let's let's uh, exchange uh, the lenses. Uh, okay, so let's uh, get started again. Let's lower this. And this is uh, the old uh, 60x uh, dry objective that I want to take out now, because this one is not par focal, and uh, this one has been giving me therefore some problems, because uh, refocusing at that high level of magnification. Um, is a little bit dangerous because there's the danger of impacting the front lens uh, with the slide and this already happened before so let's take this away and now let's insert the new objective and 
but better be careful so that I don't drop it. Okay. Well, um, here we go. I now have a 4x, 10x, 20x, 40x, and now the 60x uh, objective um, installed. So I'm not going to test it. Yep. Yes, uh, I'm. I'm happy uh, to to be able to say that it does work. Uh, it the contrast is fine. Um, I do not see any any problems. I obviously uh, I don't uh, see any. Uh, I do not see any blurred uh, any blurred parts or anything. Um, I do see. I'm looking at striated muscles right now. I do see the dark and the light bands. Uh, they are usually a little bit difficult to resolve, and that's fine here. Yeah, and uh, I, I'm quite happy with that. Um, and I'm going to show you now some of the results, and maybe I'm even going to compare the results of this objective with uh, with my old uh, 60x uh, dry objective. Um, and uh, you should be able to see uh, the differences. Um, the image quality probably is not going to be that different. Uh, as but uh, what I why I really like this objective now is uh, it's, uh, the convenience of working with it because I do not need to refocus. All I have to do now is I have to switch over from the 40x objective, and when this one is in focus, I switch over to the 60x, uh, the new 60x objective, and it's still everything is in focus, and I don't have to refocus. Uh, with this one, it was a little bit more difficult, as already mentioned. Okay, so now let's have a look. So this is uh, 4x. Uh, the image uh, that you see that is uh, the cross section of the tongue of a rabbit and uh, you see a lot of muscle fibers. So 4x, the next one is, uh, this here is 10x. I have to refocus of course a little bit. I might have to close a little bit the field diaphragm to increase contrast. So it also shows you that, yep, that was, that's a little too much. Okay. Then, 20x. I'm closing the field diagram yet again a little bit. It's again, too much. Forty x, and uh, maybe you can already start to see uh, the light and the dark bands, the striations of the muscles, little st uh, stripes. And now, this one is now the new uh, 60x objective, and now you can see the striations quite nicely. So I'm going to close the diaphragm, the condenser diaphragm, a little bit more to increase contrast. Yeah, so that's basically it's a little bit uh, too much closed. But what I will do now is, is I'm going to show you uh, the same. A picture, a little choose a different part here, the same picture using the other 60x objective. Oh, let's let's look at some kind of a prominent yeah, part. Okay. Okay, so um, I'm going to exchange the objective now. And this is now the old 60x dry objective. I did not change anything. Conden condenser settings and uh, the position of the slide and everything and all the light uh, intensity, everything is the same. So let's uh, do a little direct uh, image comparison. Uh, the picture on the left uh, is uh, by using my old 60x objective and the one on the right is the new one which just arrived. Um, there is uh, a slight uh, image difference. Uh, the new uh, objective is has a slightly higher contrast and is also a little bit sharper. One might not see it very well here in these uh, pictures, uh, but there is a slight uh, difference in image quality. Now, this image quality might not really justify um, the paying of uh, so much money to, to buy the objective. And for me, that's, uh, the image quality was also not the main reason. Um, but it was rather the fact that uh, the microscope, my microscope is now complete and has all objectives of the, of the same series. Um, to explain numbers here, A60, the A refers to a, a chromatic objective, uh, 60 magnification, the numerical aperture that's a measure for resolution is 0 0.80. The 160 over here stands for the, 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 
the standard. That's the 160 millimeter DIN standard. That's a very this was a very common standard. Uh, right now, Olympus uh, has abandoned this standard and has moved to uh, has uh, changed to Infinity Optics, and uh, so it's not uh, manufactured anymore. This is the reason why it was kind of difficult to find uh, this objective. That's why I'm a little bit happy why I got it now. And the 0 0.17 refers uh, to the cover glass thickness. Uh, and that's the best cover glass thickness uh, for, for the best resolution. Um, so the 160 is uh, 0 0.17. That is the same uh, for all um, objectives, okay? Um, here, you cannot see it on the 4X objective because it's on the other side. Okay, but it, uh, yeah, and over here, it's not written here because uh, it's not relevant. Yeah? But uh, this one over here, for example, you can see that. Uh, you also have the 0 0.17 millimeter. The reason the reason is, is uh, why this one doesn't have it, uh, the 4X doesn't have it written on it because the cover glass thickness is irrelevant, okay? I also want to show you this objective here, which I do not have uh, currently installed. This is a 100X oil immersion objective. I've only used it maybe about four, five or six times um, ever since I have it. I mean, I bought it uh, 20 years ago together with a microscope, but I've uh, rarely used it. Um, the reason why I've not used this one is, is because you need immersion oil, and this really uh, is a little bit a messy affair. Um, and it, yeah, you've got oil all over the place and also over the, the, the slide, and, and, and I didn't like that. That is the reason why I then decided uh, to buy the 60X uh, objective. And uh, you can see here it, it's a A100, it's an achromatic 100X objective and uh, um, also no cover glass thickness indicated and the reason is, is because it's not relevant uh, because the immersion oil renders uh, the cover glass um, irrelevant. Yeah. So this is, uh, yeah, I'm going to basically uh, keep this, uh, put this away again um, and I'm going to also uh, package away my old 60X a no name 60x objective that I have, and uh, if you've already watched uh, another one of my videos, I actually had uh, this one. I had I had to clean this one here because um, I got mounting medium on the front lens. Yeah, because I was a little bit uh, careless. So I made a beginner's mistake. You never ever uh, get mounting medium or anything else um, on an objective. Yeah, but uh, that is not needed anymore uh, because I've got the other one now. Yes, and uh, this was already it. Uh, I'll be using the objective from now on uh, to also make videos. Uh, and uh, I wish every one of you a nice day and as always, happy microscopy. Bye-bye.